Hi, I'm Rich from the Early Years Toolkit, and we've got five simple ways you can help your child as they return to school. Now, in England, that's going to be from next week, and everybody else, who knows? But these steps will still really help when that time comes. Last week, uh, the government released some guidelines or a, uh, a roadmap to recovery, which was laying out steps and advice for how early year settings can expect to look uh, to keep everybody safe when children return. Now, they were different for early year settings compared to some of the older children going back to school because, well, obviously, nursery children, those between 0 and 5, can't really be expected to socially distance effectively. Plus, I mean, a nursery is meant to be a, a sort of warm, nurturing environment, so. Jimmy, I don't care if you hurt your knee. Do not come any closer. Do not come any closer. The guidelines stated some of the obvious things like ensuring you don't turn up to nursery if you have symptoms, uh, same for staff. They had other things like the regular cleaning of resources, the regular cleaning of the setting, um, and then some more practical advice. So they decided that it was best to split schools up into zones, and in those zones you'd have small, consistent groups of children. Now, before we get on to the steps, it's probably worth contacting your early year setting if they haven't been in touch already, um, just to get a rough idea of what this is gonna look like, because having that conversation with your child is gonna really help. So when you've got an idea, just a rough one, of what the setting's gonna look like, we can move on to our steps. So, number one explain what's going to be different but this must be qualified with something that's going to stay the same this is really important the chances are each class each cluster each zone each bubble whatever you want to call it is going to have a limited amount of resources so you can explain the toys may not be exactly where they were but we've still got them they're just packed away somewhere else for now but in the meantime we're going to have so much fun exploring some other toys Something like that. Now, another one that is a bit more tricky is that of your friends, uh, of your child's friends. I'm sure they're your friends as well. You know, you'd be really lucky if your children are uh, having every single one of their friends in one cluster. So explaining that your friends may not be in your same group, but what remains the same? We still care about them. We are still friends. We can still see them on Zoom or whatever other video conferencing software you use. Um, maybe you're walking home now instead of taking public transport, but what stays the same? Do you pass a familiar park or a, a pretty house? Find something that stays the same and explain it to them. Number two is questioning. Now it's really important that we let our children ask as many questions as they want. This is how they're processing it and it's how they're building up a picture in their mind. Now, however annoying it is when little Ronald is sort of asking questions all day, all day. It's actually a really important thing for them to be doing. They're developing critical thinking skills, which is literally building brain power. They're building connections in their brain. There's actually been quite a lot of research into kids asking questions. Uh, and the paper that we've uh, been looking at, it's down in our description, says that there are three different types of questions that kids ask. There are cognitive questions, there are social questions, and there are operational questions. And it's the cognitive questions that they'll be asking here. So that's about where they're asking about people and places and activities and things. And these are the types of questions that sort of satisfy their curious minds and their building up an understanding of the world. And asking them questions is also a great way to help them process this. Using open-ended questions is a really good way of helping them process it and develop an understanding. And it's much easier, much easier than you would think. If you think about little Hermione um, whining on at you, why do we have to go to the shop? And then the classic response is, why do you think we have to go to the shop? That's a really good question. It's said terribly and asked in completely the wrong tone, but it's a really good question. You're encouraging her to do the thinking. Where do we get our food? Where do we get our toiletries? So number three is look after yourself. This is a really important one. It's so key. This is such a stressful time and an unusual time for everybody. So everybody's going to be dealing with it in their own way. But it's really important that you deal with these stresses and these disruptions in healthy ways to look after yourself. But importantly, we're kind of useless to our children if we, if we are stressed and not looking after ourselves because we can't be those great listeners that we need to be. Which sort of tenuously leads us on to keep on being that great role model that you are. This is a totally new situation for every single one of us. And if your child sees you coping well with it, they're likely to do the same. They'll see the management techniques you have, the sort of coping strategies. 
and in seeing the way you cope with it, they'll understand that that's the right way to do it. Similarly, if they see you showing signs of stress during this time, they'll also see that as what they should be doing um, and you see where we're going. It's obviously a lot easier said than done in practice, but it's about not projecting our reservations onto our children because it's through them facing these mild stresses or challenges or disruptions that they can build this resilience and build this ability to overcome challenges that they're going to be faced with for the rest of their life. They'll see that actually, you know what, this is okay. Now, chances are you chose the nursery, the childcare setting that your child is in because you trust them. You believe in the work they're doing. You love the staff. I'm sure it's in a convenient location as well, but you know, the, the trust is there and that trust needs to stay. The school is a safe place for your child. That's the way they're gonna see it with their familiar adults, with their friends there. So removing that thought of it being a safe space from their minds is making this a lot more difficult for yourself, for the teachers and for the children. Because our role as adults in these children's lives to inspire confidence, which leads us on to number five, and that's to encourage a growth mindset. Now a growth mindset is effectively the ability to see a failure or a challenge as a sort of learning opportunity. Um, and that's not to say your two year old is gonna turn up at the school gates next week and say, this is gonna be tough, but I'm gonna come out of this a bigger, stronger person. It's not gonna be a conscious conversation in their heads, but subconsciously, like, they will be seeing, they will be t like telling themselves they've got this. They're going to overcome these small challenges. They're going to find that actually what they were worried about on their way in, yeah, sure, it takes a bit of getting used to. Sure, it's going to be a bit different for a while, me being with eight friends instead of 30. But you know what? I still had great fun today. I still love this place. I still care about everybody here. And they're going to learn then that as challenges come to them later on in life, they can overcome them. They've got the self-esteem, they've got the resilience, they've got the confidence to face these challenges later in life. So conversation is key. We need to be good listeners. We need to be looking after ourselves. We need to be setting those good examples. And we need to be inspiring confidence in our children. If there's any takeaway at all from this, is remember that this is going to be great for them. We just need to inspire the confidence. If you believe it, they'll believe it. So if you found any of these helpful at all, let us know by hitting like. Uh, we've got lots more videos to come, so hit subscribe and you'll be the first to see them. Uh, and in the meantime, have fun, stay alert, uh, and see you soon.